I've read your comments, guys, and this has been something I've wanted to do for a while, but the timing just had to be right, and I think today's that day. We're pulling the 335 out of retirement, baby. The irony of seeing this thing sitting next to a Supra, because I always called it the BMW version of the Supra back in the day, yeah. before they actually made a Supra. This thing sounds pretty good. It sounds sick. It's not breaking up either, which is abnormal. We'll pull it in the shop. This might be like one of the first times I've ever had this car in the shop. So. That's kind of crazy. Um, all right, I feel like I owe you guys a backstory for those of you that may not be super familiar with this car. So uh, let me give you the rundown. A lot of you guys that have been with the channel for a long time already know the backstory of this car and it being pretty much the reason why I was driven in the very early days of having a business. I wanted to own one of these so bad, they were like in the $20,000 range and uh, it was cool to me because back then no one really knew what it was. It was such a sleeper and it was really the car that kind of had me laser set my goals and just really push hard and for lack of a better word, grind uh, in a time where a lot of my friends and other people my age would just be partying and doing other stuff. It made me build the foundation of what you see today and this business. So it definitely holds a special place in my heart. It is a very iconic car to this channel for that reason. And I'll, I'll link the video that I'm referencing here where I really like kind of break down that story. But in terms of car, it started off as a 2008 330. 35i manual coral red interior which was my dream spec at the time it was pretty hard to find i got it with 63,000 miles and it currently has 99,000, so it hasn't broken 100k yet but it's getting up there in terms of mods i did the typical 335i stuff i did all the bolt-ons and that was great for a while but i wanted to take to the next step so i wound up doing a single turbo kit i partnered with psi back in the day when they had their old shop they did all the install and everything because really didn't know anything about cars in general back then and everything was great mechanically but so much time got wasted on the tuning side because it was pretty early. But with these cars back then and still pretty much now to this day, the stock ECU is the most economical and really the best option. But when you have a bigger turbo, you end up needing to add port injection to get more fuel into the engine. And the way that everything talks to itself, it just wasn't really the most reliable. It never necessarily had engine issues. It just would never consistently run. But it did run enough to win a YouTuber showdown that Rob Ferretti did, which got this car shipped from the US all the way over to Germany to go do some laps on the ring. And when that happened, we kind of went full race car with it. So what used to be just a 750 horsepower street car, then went back to PSI and they helped me take the car to more of a race car spec. Uh, we went for the BC Forge so I could fit a little bit bigger tire, put Brembo big brakes on it, and they did every single bushing and every single arm underneath the car. So it's now essentially an E92 M3 underneath with the LSD. It's a proper car. And I also, pretty much the only interior mod in this thing is my bride bucket seat. And quite honestly, I would keep the stock seats in here, but I was worried about getting thrown around on the Nürburgring. Um, that wound up to be a total disaster. The paperwork didn't go through right, so the car got stuck at port, got sent back, got a bunch of damage to it. And I would say after that moment, it kind of left a sour taste in my mouth with the car. I got a little bit of ambition to get it running and do a couple things with it after that. I think when we were doing the open houses and the car had a reason to be driven, but it still was always temperamental from the side of the ECU stuff. So there is the option to go standalone in the car. And because it's a newer car, you need to have the can control to keep the dash and everything working happy, which means the ECU is typically very expensive. Um, you would usually go with like a Motec, but I think in this case, most people go Cyvex. That's not really a route I wanted to go. It's like 10 grand for the ECU and all the crap you need to do that. And I just didn't want to put that into a car that I didn't really have a purpose for. However, I have heard that there's been large advancements on the N54 platform. And I know a lot of you guys that follow me have one because uh, I talk to you guys about it at events whenever I get to meet you. And I always apologize for um, bringing you into the N54 life that has 
made a lot of people's happy lives very sad. But when they're great, they're great. And I am very curious for you guys to point me in the direction of who the leader is right now in the tuning side and ECU software side of the N54 platform, because I would like to just get it running consistently. It works good and it makes power, but it's just annoying. I always use the analogy, it's like you hit a mosquito and the car pulls timing. So sometimes it'll have 700 horsepower and it'll be sick. And then the next pull you'll do it and it'll feel like you just hit a wall and it makes like 400 horsepower. Um, so that would be cool, but uh, today, but until I see your guys' comments, we're gonna put some time in and do some other stuff that'll make me more stoked on this thing. I don't know what it is about these OEM wings, but for whatever reason, I can never get them to stick right. Sure enough, dude, look, it's about to come off. I had one fly off on me before and I had another one where the, my bike came off the roof and <laughs> dented my trunk and ripped this off. Dude, look at the paint on this bumper too. I think I had to repaint that. Yeah, it's like the clear cured weird. So body-wise, everything in the car is pretty much stock. I did the M Sport rear bumper and I did the M Sport side skirts, which regrettedly, like the rear bumper looks like now because of the way the paint aged. And then the side skirts never really fit right because I think they're reps. So we'll add that on list of things to address. But the, the number one thing that's gonna make me like this car, or should I say the number one thing that makes me not like this car, if you're a girl that works at BMW Japan and you can understand what I don't like about the car. My absolute favorite thing on the car, which was also the first real set of wheels I ever bought, are these beautiful LMs. And uh, I actually got scammed on them when I first bought them. And they were not only the wrong spec, but they were also, I think, cracked. So I ended up having to buy a new barrel, which was a giant headache. Um, so what I wound up doing is I swapped the faces from front to rear to get the offset better. Um, but I always had rubbing issues, so I couldn't fit a good tire. But what's funny is part of my rationale for those black wheels was to fit a bigger tire in the rear. But tire technology has come so much farther that like back in the day when I ran this, the Michelin Pilot Super Sport was like the bee's knees. Now there are so many better tires that have so much more grip, even in the same size, that I think I could get away with going to a smaller tire to avoid the rubbing and still have twice the traction that this ever had. Probably. So um, the biggest thing, I just hate that the car is on black wheels right now. So I'm gonna get these on and then kind of like figure out what I can do in terms of tire size so I can get some tires ordered. And hopefully just seeing it on these will make me fall in love with the car again. Michael, I think we have a problem. I may have neglected the whole big brake scenario. Uh, I'm gonna fingers crossed that it fits, but I was gonna nicely recondition these wheels, but maybe I should wait and do that until I confirm they fit. Hey, I forgot I got fancy headlights done on this thing. That's kind of cool. The little halos and the carbon fiebre. Yeah, that is pretty sweet. The car is pretty clean. Now that these things have gotten so old, it's almost a classic. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's it's almost 20 it. years old. Can't wait till my insurance goes down. You know, it's been a while when you forget the jack point. You know, worst case scenario, why does my car look like it's a different color? Oh, you're right, you're right. I was gonna say, this car has not had any paintwork except for the rear bumper and the trunk and maybe some... <laughs> It hasn't had that much paint work. Everyone used to talk that I kept the, the wood grain. For whatever reason, I always loved it in this car. Like, it's like a cool smoky wood grain where everyone would always switch it for like aluminum or black. I would almost love to see if we could do like a translucent gray over it. Cause like, if it maintained the same like smoky feel, yeah, but it was like a, a gray tone instead of a brown tone, it'd be worth experimenting with. I'm sure I could like find a set pretty cheap online. Yeah. Instead of risking messing mine up. I wonder if, Steck makes like a clear-ish colored film. So Steck does make a film. Steck does have fashion films that we could use to change. I mean, like they're obviously their carbon fiber yeah. film would be the move, but I also have a really badass painter here. So it'd be pretty legit if we could do that. And like trim, you know, too, with all the corners and stuff, it can get tricky, yeah. especially Steck is PPF. So it can be more challenging for um, like smaller, tighter panels opposed to wrap. Thank God this thing doesn't have lug bolts. <laughs> That would suck. You wanna know what's really funny? The brakes are worth more than this car. These things are so cheap now. Dude, like you can, I mean, I'd assume a manual car still fetches like a decent amount of value, but like, I bet this car, if it was stock, manual as it is, would probably be sub eight grand. The, the problem with these things is like, if proper maintenance hasn't been done, it's like just thousand dollars here, thousand dollars there, thousand dollars here, thousand dollars there. Yeah. You're, you're, high pressure fuel pump, and then your injectors, and then your walnut blasting, and then your walnut blasting again, and then your walnut blasting again, and then your walnut blasting a third time. These wheels haven't been off here since Germany. <laughs> Can't say that with most cars. I guess actually every BMW <laughs> you could say that about. <laughs> it's coming? No, I'm just 
cheering you on here. You know, I think gloss black is part of the problem because it used to be satin and then the, the finish had some issues, so I got them powder coated black. I, I think that's part of the problem. I don't even need to run lug nuts. I don't want to ding my rotors if it just like decides to come off in a bath of fury. That's weird to hear someone say they'd rather ding their wheel than their rotor. Yeah, I mean, they're nice wheels, but oh, there we go. They're not carbon ceramics though. All right, the moment of truth. I'm actually a little bit more worried than the, about the rears and the fronts. I feel like my Fitment used to be pretty tits on this thing. Oh, dude, we ain't even sweating out here. Oh man. You we got, even clear the wheel weights. You got a heck of room. Yeah, hey, fire me up and call me Sally, dude. This ain't a bad look. All right, Sally. Hell yeah. yeah. I was gonna clean the wheels off the car, but I feel like I should just, now that the wheel's on here, I should just bolt it on and I can just clean it on yeah. the car. The tire looks kind of tiny. I feel like I need a bigger tire in front. Yeah, I mean, it's also dry rotted, but this is just not permanent right now. So 225.35, this one was 245.35. So we'll, uh, we'll take some measurements that way, now that I'm a fitment expert because of racing, I'll be able to understand if we can make adjustments and then I can order some fresh rubber. You know what's funny? I'm so used to seeing fake LMs that seeing real LMs on the car with big Brembo's behind it, tell me it doesn't look like those fake like caliper covers on the car. It does. <laughs> Isn't that exactly what it looks like? Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Wait do you see this bitch on the ground. She's gonna be a little bit looted and tooted. I'm probably gonna need a lower. I think these are also smaller too. So the car's gonna be quite a bit lower, just like from wheel size alone. I wonder, I can't remember on the rubbing side, like if I'll need to lower this car or what the deal is gonna be. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, that's a great shirt. Where'd you find it? Oh, LZMFG.com. Did you know that you get entered for every $5 you spend on LZMFG.com for a chance to win the GR Corolla and $12,500 cash? Just like the shirt that you own? I had no idea. They can't hear you, you don't have a mic. He said, oh my God, I'm gonna head over right now and shop yeah, now. I'm gonna spend more than $5 so I get more than one entry. All right. Yeah, also <laughs> these clear. They do? Yeah, they do. Oh, I forgot about that, the yeah. brakes. Yeah. That was part of the concern. Yeah, so these are, um, there's like five series LMs. So that's part of the reason the, the faces were a little bit too aggressive. So I needed to take the more aggressive face and put it in the back to put the less aggressive in the front. Makes sense, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a tight boy. It's a little, little pokey, but. I might need to add some canby or cut. Mm, yeah, so you, know, you wanna know another thing that always drove me nuts about this car? If you look here, I had the fenders pulled, so like I gave a lot of clearance, but the problem yeah. is it doesn't change here. Right. Here, so like even though it's pulled, so I have a gap up here, yep. but then it's tight here and this is where it rubs. Mm -hmm. So I wish I just left them straight because now it's like my fitment looks weak even if I'm rubbing. Yeah, you'd have to cut like inside of here to be able to pull that and that's just mad bad. No I mean, I'm down to do that. I mean, you can, it's just... Yeah, that was one of my biggest regrets ever and that's like... That's like getting a tattoo. You don't. You can't go back. You gotta make sure you want what you want. Yep. Or if you just think you're. A yeah, it's like you gotta make sure you want what you want. I do. Yeah. I like this. I like Sacagawea right it's there. Not Sacagawea. This is David. <laughs> Gosh darn it! I'm not just f around, dude. I don't know who tightened that. Try it. I mean. It was very stuck. It's a little pokey, but. Wow, it looks so high now. It does. That's kind of hilarious. <laughs> wow, I guess that must have been way lower before. Yeah, yeah it is It is really pokey in the back, huh? The front's sunk. Yeah. Watch me switch the faces back. <laughs> or is that what I already did? So let's, let's find out. So the front faces say 19 by 10, 26. Obviously it's not a 10 because I swapped them around. 19 by nine and a half plus 12. Hmm. So the 26 is what we want in the rear. But I think the 12 is too much in the front. Well, that's only a centimeter difference. Maybe 26 and 12? It's like 14 mil. Oh, and then you split that, that's seven mil. Because you split that in half, right? Or no, you don't. You don't. Yeah. 14 mil, so 1.4 centimeters difference. So if you're looking to gain 1.4 in the front, then you might be good to swap the faces. I wonder if I added camber in the front with M3 arms, and that's part of it. Maybe. Like, the front, Lip looks flush to fender. The rear. Damn. Gotta catch them all. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it, that could work. Yeah, especially I don't you know, these gold hardwares. Flashy, spiky boys, huh? This wasn't my plan today, but now I'm intrigued. Um, I think when I originally swapped the faces, it was because of the front was poking a lot. But 
Back then, I also didn't have M3 lowers, and well, that wouldn't make a difference. But the fact that I have camber plates up top now, which I should have had before, but maybe I was too afraid to adjust camber. Yeah, I think I had it on BCs back in the day, but maybe I was afraid of adding too much camber because the forum said, oh, danger. Yeah, yeah now that. Crank it in, dude. Okay. So I'm gonna try swapping the faces, see if I can gain some real state in the rear. I'd really love to get a 285 on it. Yeah, that's, that's my goal. No thread locker and I can hold the nut on the other side, so I'm not gonna risk scratching. I'm stoked about that. I wonder what the torque spec on these was. To me like it was number three. It kind of does, huh? <laughs> this is actually pretty, going pretty fast. One down. Man, I can't wait to polish these. <laughs> All those spiky spokes made it impossible to polish in here. So you see how like cruddy it got? Yeah. It's gonna clean up so nice. Well, fun fact, my entire life, I thought I swapped those faces to uh, fix the offset, but all the offset actually came from the barrels. Because Look, both the faces, literally almost identical height. Now the, the actual pad and the shape of the face, this one's a little bit more like concaved or this one's a flat face spoke. Um, but yeah, the whole time I swapped them around, did absolutely nothing. I could have just left it. And they're they're like technically a two-piece wheel, so it's not like we can just play around with lips or barrels. Just the, the perfectionist in me now wants to use an opportunity to like make something better. But the idea of putting back together the wheels for the exact same thing makes me sad. I suppose our measurements pretty much confirm this on the car, but I was like, convinced that it would be different. Because we were measuring from the back bed to the top of the spoke, and like visibly that's different, but the actual height to the rim is the same. All right, we're taking a quick break from the 335 to do something that I've been dying to do. Freddy has this beautiful Supra. You guys have seen it in the background of videos, and this may or may not be the spiciest oh. Supra I've ever been in. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've driven uh, Trevor's, and I got to drive his. I think it was like 700. So like, this is the real thousand horsepower Supra that I've always dreamt of being in. Give me a quick rundown. Uh, it's a 3.4, your favorite, BBTI 2J, uh, V160 car, 12 injector, Motec. Makes 1330, I like 44 pounds of boost, but I don't really run it there because it doesn't hook. I'm really excited. I've never driven a 3.4 in any street car or even been in one for that matter. I've only gotten to appreciate them drifting, which obviously they don't really hook. On top of that, I'm hoping it gives me a little bit of motivation to touch my Supra. It's kind of been sitting in the corner and a lot of the parts that I had set aside for it, we've been using for the race program, but the end of the season's near, which means we might be able to do Supra things. And this is an 86 mil turbo, so it'll be much lazier than you expect it to be, but I think you'll be surprised on like how well it comes online too. One of the best things of Freddy having a Supra is that he's tried pretty much every combo he can on this and has been plotting all the data. So um, this has been very helpful for us making decisions when it comes to Jay-Z stuff. Yeah. yeah, I put, I think, three different turbos on this and two sets of camshafts in it. So I played around and I like this combo. Oh, it's not bad. I think it could go to a smaller turbo and enjoy it more on the street, but I'm tired of changing the back housing because it's a four bolt. Yeah. It takes like a couple hours to do all the bolts right. So I'm over it. <laughs> yeah, you got all the TRD in this too? Yeah. You're flexing. I know. It's a good point. Holy clutch. Yeah. That's gnarly. Yeah. What you got in there? Uh, it's like the Tilton 246. So selfishly, another thing that I'm excited is to feel what a V160 feels like to know if that's the route I want to go, if I want to be a dickhead and go sequential. So this one winds a lot because it was ran dry when installed. Really? Yeah, but it works. You know, my thought is they're worth so much money now that I could sell it and buy sequential versus yeah. keeping it and risking breaking it. I really like T6 Magnum. Really? Whenever I ride two cars with them, they feel good and they're like, they, they hold the power for the price. Clutch is really easy to drive. It is. It's, it's heavy, heavy, but it's so easy. It's a 15 16 master. It's almost one inch. Do Supras do weird things like, 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 uh, it's boost by gear. Okay. Seconds on gate, but if you leave on the anti lag, it may spin. And it steps out to the right a little bit, just like, you know, I think it's on wood. Seeing you pull up at this thing, dude, it looks so freaking cool. It does look cool. The steering wheel gets a little spicy. AC's ice cold? It's all right. <laughs> I'm downplaying it. It's 100 degrees outside right now. It's not that laggy. No. For the, it's pretty good. The turbo side is great. What do you rev to? 85. All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to get down. Thank you for letting me drive this. Yeah, no problem. I expected you to give me a ride. 
ride first and give me like a whole rundown on how to drive it. It's self-sufficient. It's a good cruiser. It is. I see why you drive this thing so much. Yeah, like I wanted it to like be really comfortable driving it, so I actually enjoy driving it. Yeah. And the gears are long in this, so. Creep it a little bit. Do whatever you want. It's all yours.
faster than like my R32 sedan. My R32 sedan feels so much more visceral because of all the stuff going on and it's yeah. spinning and moving around. Yeah. It's like the whole experience. So this car is like, you could hand this to someone who's only ever driven Ferraris on the boost setting that I started it and they wouldn't yeah. crash it. Yep. Which is crazy. And I think I made it too numb for myself, but I don't like that scary feeling Yeah. either. So I need that to get my juices flowing. <laughs> When I had the Toyos, it would spin third gear. Uh, I'm like, I'm gonna die. <laughs> See, I like that if it's a car that you feel like you can control. Yeah. When I had the automatic trans in the Mustang and it would do that and it would just like wheel speed to 120 <laughs> miles an hour. <laughs> Terrifying. I'd never know what gear it was gonna be in. Automatic scare me because if they shift on the spin, yeah. you're, you're like prone to die. You know? Yeah. A plus. A plus. I like that. And everything's in such good condition too. Kind of your sway. If you're wondering why Freddy's here today, uh, it actually isn't for any E36 stuff since that car's already at Utah getting ready for the next round of Formula Drift. The R32 sedan may or may not be down. Oh, it's down from the count. How did I blew, I blew a head gasket. You think you did it? Well, I mean, I, I was driving it. So. No, so here's the thing. It was giving me some random misfires. I think I took it to OSW Formula Drift and it was just like randomly just kind of bub, bub, bub sometimes and it seemed like it was getting worse. Mm -hmm. And we found that an injector had been, uh, like one of the wires was coming out, so we thought it was that. But maybe, I mean we're about to see because we're about to get the head off, maybe that melted uh, something. Well the head gasket's definitely checked out because it makes coolant pressure at like 20 pounds of boost. Uh, just running through the valve lash of the motor, seeing if any studs move, and then we'll go from there. This engine's always been super noisy, so Freddie wanted to come over and measure lash, and it is a, a little bit looser than we normally would run. Um, just because obviously if the head's coming off, it's a good opportunity to kind of reshim everything. But I'm hoping that the block is fine and it's just like uh, the studs got loose or the head gasket failed, fingers um, crossed. One thing Jay told me to look out for is since this was half inch converted, if the threads don't go under the deck surface, that can cause the gasket to kind of move around some. Mm. So we're going to check that out, make sure the conversion was done right. If that wasn't it, we can kind of point blame towards that. Um, see if the head banana, just kind of look through it. Just for the heck of it, before I start reassembling, I'm going to test fit from this 265 up to a 285. I think it's definitely going to rub, but I'm going to see what I can do by adjusting the camber and see if it's possible to fit before I go with a final setup on this thing and rebuild the wheels and do all that stuff. That's quite a lot. I don't know if all the camber in the world can even make that fit. If you have an E92, I feel sorry for you. I spent the past hour trying to adjust camber, realizing that I could only adjust camber with this arm and by actually pulling it out of the car. <laughs> so it's going to be one of those scenarios. That sucks. Yeah, but um, I'm just going to shorten it all the way and hope that's enough to fit the, the tire. So yeah. we'll see. Kind of get a thumbnail photo, so. All right, it's, it's gonna be a little tight and we might need to get with the boys about doing a little bit of massaging back here in this area or it might get fixed once I uh, get some tow. But I think my favorite thing about this setup is it's the OG wheels that this car had, but it's like a hybrid of the old school like Stancy Boy 335 with new school Adam that likes to put big grippy tires and everything. She kind of she kind of looked a little thick. She got a little camber, so like I could say it's kind of like a track car, but it's not that aggressive. No. It's like maybe like two degrees or something. Yeah. But um. You know, it's not fun if the car don't be hooking. Yeah. And when she hooking, she be tooting. And when she's tooting, she's scooting. Anyway, uh, as a reminder, the main purpose of this video was in hopes that all of my lovely N54 audience, who probably watches more than the regular audience because their car's usually broken, so they know how much else to do. Sorry. <laughs> that really got you where it hurt there. It's okay. I've been there too. And it's my fault. You can blame it on me. I'll take it all day especially if you're a girl that works at N54 Japan. We'll leave that here, kind of running out of time, but uh, it looks like, you know, next step is just dialing in the alignment. And uh, of course, now that the wheels are split, I need to completely refinish them and make them look better, but we're not just gonna buy new ones. We're gonna make the OG ones look better. Yeah. So we'll dive into that maybe a little bit more tomorrow. I got some other fun plans, but um, if you're excited to see this thing come back, I am too. And if you have help for me, thank you. Leave a comment. And leave a comment if you're a girl. <laughs> yeah, that was one of my biggest regrets ever. And that's like, that's like getting a tattoo. You don't, you can't go back. You gotta make sure you want what you want. Yep. Or if you just think you do it. Yeah, it's like, you gotta make sure you want what you want. I do. Yeah. Like Sacagawea right there.